Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a quick, of what should be a relatively quick knife review uh, covering a very good pocket knife. This is the Max Ace Meerkat in S90V. The price tag on this is excellent. We're going to talk about that. Uh, the overall knife is very, very good. I will link it right down below so you guys can check it out if you want to. That does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Max Ace for providing this knife for review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and measure this knife. Not a huge knife, but in a lot of ways, this is kind of like... It's not the same thing as the Spyderco Techno, right? But there were things that frustrated me about the Spyderco Techno, even though I, I really liked the overall appearance of it. It's kind of like a better Spyderco Techno, but not in a perfect way. So don't crucify me for saying that. I know a lot of people really like the Techno. Um, but that's, that's just what it reminds me of. The overall length is actually 6.85 inches. The blade length is 2.85 inches. And the blade, the cutting edge length, you know, that's not fair. It's because of the point on the frame. So we have to say the blade length is technically three inches, and then the cutting edge is also three inches. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Any custom scales you see can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others. So up against the AD10, the AD20.5. It is shorter than the AD20.5, but I got to point out here, blade length, it's actually more cutting edge. And I mean, if we do blade to blade, it's, it's really about the same, right? The AD20.5 just has a much longer handle. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Pair 3? Once again, uh, it's shorter than both, but if we're going to talk cutting edge, it's actually quite a bit more than the Pair 3. I think it's almost exactly the same. Just a bit, just a bit shorter cutting edge than the uh, PM2. And then finally, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Hogue Deca. Shorter than both, for sure. How's the action? It's good. It's, uh, it will fall, and this nub will catch your finger, so you don't have to run it into the blade. And it is past the detent ball, so with a little bit of encouragement, it will fall shut. I also want to point out here the detent is very good. Plenty of access to this opening hole here. Even cut below the space on the lock bar, which means that reverse flick is a crispy. Yes, it is good. It feels right. The detent is exactly right for this, and it is a joy to open. Access to the lock bar is also good. It is not cut higher on the lock side, but it is knocked down enough. It doesn't look like it, but it's knocked down enough that this is not an uncomfortable process. It's a tad pinchy, and I wish that they had carved this out a little lower or added, you know, kind of like how Sharp by Design does it, where they add a lip to the lock bar insert that allows a little bit more leverage when you're coming in from the side. But you know what? It's fine. It will work. It's very easy to uh, operate. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness this is what I'm talking about right there. You got to be careful with it because that lock bar tension is fairly high. I like that. That's part of what's creating the good detent experience, but you'll have to kind of adjust to it. Let's do uh, thickness here up against the pair of three. It's slightly thicker length and height up against the PM2 and the pair of three. This guy's actually very compact. It is a little bit thicker, but you're going to have essentially the same type of carry experience as you would with the Spyderco, the Spyderco, the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco pair of three, except that it's going to be heavier uh, it's versus the base versions because we've got titanium uh, for the scales on these. Now they are milled out just a little bit. We'll go ahead and weigh it. Scale. There you are. I put it up here today so I would not have to spend <laughs> a certain amount of time looking for it. The weight on this guy is 3.88 ounces, which isn't bad considering it's full tie and the blade length is about three inches. Not bad ratios at all. I think the balance is spot on, right? Where you're going to have your index finger anyway, unless you are choked up, which you can do and we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, I don't, uh, I don't find that the weight is bad at all in this guy. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. We're going to start with a T8 here because that's most likely what the whole thing is going to require. Nope, that pivot is actually going to be a T10. Yeah, T10 for the pivot. I mean, you, a lot of people are like, show it! It's T10 for the pivot. The body screws, T8. Just making sure, just making sure. Yeah, T8. Four T8 screws and a T10 pivot. That's how you do it. That's what we like to see. Uh, very easy to take apart. 
maintain, put back together, all of that. As long as you have the right tools for the job, you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness here. I think it's a relative, it's not, it's not, it's like a, not a super thin blade, but I, I bet 130 max, maybe more. No, nope, more than that. 150 thousandths here. It's probably, probably could have been thinner, but it's not bad. It's okay. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. This is a nice, fairly robust little knife, but not so chunky that it, it's bothersome. They could have gone thinner on the titanium scales and they could have gone thinner on the blade, but truthfully, the cutting edge and the, you know, the geometry that they have this blade, I'm gonna take a piece of paper out of my notes here. I don't even know what was written on there. Let me see if I can get it to, but yeah, it bites no problem and it is still slicing. I would not call this a tear cut. I think it, it feels good. So I don't really have a problem with that. In fact, I kind of like, because it is on the smaller side, I kind of like that it's a little more robust. I think that's mainly what makes me think of the Spyderco Techno and just that in the overall appearance. Plain blasted, I'm sorry, it's like a dark tumbled titanium. Edges nicely chamfered all the way around. Ergonomically, if you are back here in the standard grip, your pinky's gonna be slipping off the end. If you choke up, it's not a perfect ergonomic grip, but you can do it. You're very close to the edge, right? It kind of depends on what you're doing. I think the safest grip is gonna be here. For a three finger knife, it's not bad. And there's a little bit of a notch here, no jimping. They probably should have added it here. A little bit of notch there um, that allows you a good place to keep your thumb if you are doing a little bit of detailed work. The blade has a partially blasted and partially satin finish on it with a nice swedge. There's plenty of room to drop down to a reasonable cutting edge. I'm not gonna call it thin, but EDC stuff, yeah. And the best thing about this is I think it's still a good enough geometry to accentuate what S90V is meant for, which is continuous cutting uh, when you're dealing with light or medium materials. S90V is probably my favorite premium steel to see on a production knife. I love it so much more than M390 because I find it, in most cases, it's much easier for companies to get it optimized. So you're gonna have substantially better edge retention than M390 and at least the same amount of toughness, sometimes better, right? That's a better balance and it's still stainless. It's not as stainless as M390, but we're talking 14%, 14.5% chromium versus, what is M390, 20% chromium? You might care if you live in an area where corrosion is a problem, but this is still definitely a stainless steel. It's still past the line that's required for a stainless steel and you get better properties. I think S90V is a better steel. It's also more expensive for companies to buy CPM S90V from Crucible. Yes, this is a Chinese made knife, but it's not like they made the steel. Nope, they buy it from Crucible, which is here in the United States. This is authentically S90V steel, which is really, really great, especially considering the price tag on this knife. Holy moly. The edges of the inside of the hole are all nicely knocked down. For some reason, this is one of those companies that seems to think we need to have the name of the knife on the knife. It's kind of like how people like to put Camaro on the windshield of their Camaro, as if it doesn't say Camaro in, in at least two other places from the factory on the car. Why? <laughs> Why do you do that? <laughs> we don't need it on there. Um, and then it says S90V, which is fine. Outside of that, there's nothing there. I especially like the show side of the knife. I think it looks good. There's a little pivot collar there. That's nice. I think these do come with some different colored accents on the pocket clip and the backspacer, but this one's just gray with gray and more gray, which is fine. Um, we have a little bit of jimping on the backspacer, which is raised slightly above the frame. We have a lanyard hole if you care. No lefty pocket clip mounting position. Sorry, lefties. They should have put one on there. What they did do, right, is the length of the clip. We don't need a super long clip. That would have been silly. It's also a milled clip. So we have a milled titanium backspacer and a milled titanium clip. I do not like this. That is pinchy. Yes, it'll hold it into your pants, but I like the ramp. This comes up and over, which means squishing it into some of the ultra thick seams on work pants might be a little bit problematic. But that's hardly that much of an issue, to be honest with you. This does have a steel lock bar insert. It doesn't look like it does, but let me show you on the inside. They've just hidden it completely. The, uh, yeah, can we, is it right there, yeah. There's the steel lock bar insert, two screws that obviously just thread out before the titanium ends. So you don't see it on this side. That's fine. You only need three threads to hold it in there and there's no way it's coming out anyway. Um, the uh, stop, pin, uh, stop pin is located in its usual spot with a little bit of shouldering. That's great. This knife runs on bearings. You probably could have figured that out. No blade play, up, down, left, or right. No lock stick, no pivot lash. 
Smooth, consistent, a little tight initially, but that's fine. It'll break in. Excellent detent. And what do you know? Perfect centering with no detent lash. Very simple knife. There's a lot of other stuff like this on the market. This isn't a unique design. There's a couple of things that make it a little quirky, but where it wins is what it delivers for the price. This is a $158 knife. <laughs> There's no, no, uh, you know, small amount of titanium here. It's quite a bit of S90V and it's honestly, it's produced well. This is good quality. They've done simple right. I mean, a lot of companies would be like, yeah, we can do that. That'll be $225. What? Not when Max Ace is doing it for $158. Wild. Honestly, the only better buy than this, right, if you reduce it largely to the materials, which you should not, should also factor in where it's made, the, the, the execution, right, the, the overall design, right, is it accommodating to the human hand? Does it make sense if you're going to use it as a tool, right? You got to look at it for what it is. The only better buy is also made by Max Ace, and it's the Black Mirror, which you can also get in S90V. This is excellent. Easy. This is an easy review, right? It doesn't take, you don't have to like watch a Metal Complex review on this knife to determine that it's a good buy. You would look at it, look who makes it, look at the materials, look at the price and go, yeah, it's a pretty good buy. But if you didn't know about it, well, I'm glad you found it here. I'll link it down below. You should be able to find it. And if not, check out the Black Mirror. You can get that thing in M390 or S90V in a wide variety of different configurations. Also, for a great price, a uh, huge win for Max Ace here. And I imagine this would otherwise fly under the radar for a lot of people. Big fan of the Meerkat. I hope I've been saying Meerkat this whole time. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, everybody. How do I end this? Thanks again for watching, everybody. There we go. And have a great day.